Birch family. Welcome back. Welcome back. I'm so sorry I didn't have a video up on Tuesday. It's it's literally been a little crazy around here, okay? I literally get married in a month and 20 days and I'm just coming to the realization that I don't have anything done. Actually, I have a lot done, but it's like the small details that, uh, that I don't have done. <sighs> kind of start to freak out just a little bit, just a little bit. I know all of you are here watching this video because it is a veterinary vlog and that's what everyone comes to this channel to see. I started to include little bits and pieces of like my everyday life in this video because um, I asked you guys on Instagram and Snapchat if that's what you wanted. Pretty much everyone said yes. So make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you like it or a thumbs down if you don't like it so I can figure out what you guys like. Also a ton of you guys have been wanting me to give you updates on like wedding planning and all that kind of stuff which I have made a huge vlog on this entire experience um, but I think that video is actually going to be going up on my wedding day because I do have like footage of my dress and me getting my dress altered and I really don't want my fiance to see that because I know he will watch that video so if you've been asking for that it is coming but it's gonna be on my wedding day which is November 3rd so yeah that's enough rambling I think I've covered everything so let's get started <laughs> to feed these kittens. There's a sleeping Alexandra. She has her own bedroom, but yet she sleeps on the couch. Good morning, sister. Good morning, sister. I'm always getting questions on whether or not cats need dentals just like dogs and the answer is yes cats need dentals too. This was a three-year-old cat that came in to get his dental cleaning because as you can see he had a lot of tartar buildup. So this case is super important and I really wanted to record it for you guys. This dog had quite a bit tartar buildup but most importantly he had severe periodontal disease. As you can see look how red and inflamed these gums are. Make sure when you're looking at your pet's teeth or if you work in a veterinary clinic that you're not just looking at the tartar. It's more important to take into consideration the health of the gums because even though this dog, it looks like his dental cleaning wouldn't have been that bad, he actually ended up getting a lot of his teeth extracted. He had really bad periodontal pockets. He had grade three furcation exposures and you can tell that there was a significant amount of bone loss. So on a scale of one to four, his dental grade would be a four because of the periodontitis. This is another one that we saw this week and this is a cat and as you can see he doesn't have a lot of tartar buildup. Uh, all of this bleeding is just for me probing his teeth. So this patient was also graded a 4 out of 4 because there is significant bone loss. He has periodontal pockets. He has grade 3 furcation exposures. He also had a bunch of resorptive lesions. This cat initially came to us because he hadn't been eating normally for the past couple weeks and after my doctor examined him he had really bad gingivitis and we elected to do a dental cleaning. Coming to find he had all of these issues that were extremely painful like resorptive lesions and he also had a mass in the back of his mouth that you can kind of see right here. So all the non-viable teeth were extracted, the mass was removed and sent to histopath. It ended up not being anything cancerous and the cat is doing a hundred times better. Look at this little booger. Where are you trying to go? We are currently done with appointments and have no appointments. <laughs> Just relaxing after a long day of work. Excuse me. Thank you. Excuse me. Can I help you? Is, is there something I can help you with? I don't know if it's like a full moon or if there's some kind of energy in the air, but our clinic has been so freaking busy the past couple weeks, like emergency after emergency, emergency, emergency. Do y'all hear my dad's TV? It's so freakishly loud. I'm probably gonna sleep in my scrubs tonight, so. I can just wake up and walk out the door in the morning. Y'all be honest with me, if you have ever slept in your scrubs just to cut down on like 10 extra minutes of sleep in the morning, not that I do it all the time, okay? I'm not disgusting. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is put some dry shampoo in this greasy head. Cause I didn't wash it, cause I didn't feel like washing my hair. 
honey. It's your grandmommy. Make sure you subscribe to this channel, honey. And we're just gonna put this hair up in the hopes that all that dry shampoo is gonna soak up all that grease. Look at this little booger. She is so cute. She came to see us to get spayed and also get her hernia fixed. So we're just getting her prepped for surgery. So I just gave her her pre-medication, which will put her to sleep and then we'll get her intubated and hooked up to our anesthesia machine. And the machine is going to keep her asleep throughout the surgery and also provide her with adequate amounts of oxygen. All of our surgeries will also get hooked up to monitoring equipment, which will monitor their blood pressure, their heart rate, their respiratory rate, also their oxygen and CO2 concentrations. So here's this kitty cat's hernia. There are a bunch of different types of hernias, but this one is called an umbilical hernia. This is the most common type of hernia that we see. They are congenital and mostly seen in puppies and kittens. If your pet has an umbilical hernia, you will notice that where their belly button should be has been replaced with a squishy protrusion. Depending on the size, these can either heal on their own or can be surgically fixed when your pet is spayed or neutered. Failure to repair these hernias, if large enough, can lead to serious complications. Here is a fecal flotation that has a bunch of whipworm eggs on it. The whipworm eggs do look like little footballs. Now, the interesting thing about whipworms is that infections only occur when a dog eats the infective stage eggs from the environment. However, that does mean that your pet can get infected anytime if your dog eats soil that has been contaminated with whipworms. For instance, like eating grass or rooting in the dirt or playing with toys that have been in contact with contaminated soil. But another cool thing about whipworms is that once the egg have been deposited into the soil, they can survive in the environment for years. It's currently about 11.30 and we just got done doing surgery. So these guys are just hanging out while they wake up. We need our coffee this morning. You know what I'm saying? Hi, kitty. Are you drugged? Are you drugged, little kitty? For those of you that like to watch Alexandra, let me just show you what she does. I'm being crazy. Alexandra, who are you talking to? Why are you filming me? What are you doing? I'm watching YouTube. You're not watching me on YouTube? <laughs> it's Friday. <coughs> oh my God. God. Golly. But I need my coffee to be able to tackle this day. Friday! Woo! Woo! Here is another cat in for a dental cleaning. Y'all wanted more cat dentals. You know, ask and you shall receive. So this is a, another dental that I would have graded a four out of four, but this kitty had two or three furcation exposures and also some periodontal pockets. So a grade three furcation exposure exists when the periodontal probe extends under the crown of multi-rooted teeth. That means that the probe goes through and through from one side of the furcation to the other. The periodontium is destroyed to such a degree that the furcation is open and exposed. Furcation disease is often silent and can be treated when found early to decrease the rate of progression and discomfort. However, for grade three furcation exposures, extraction is the treatment of choice, although there are some advanced mucogingival surgeries that can be performed, but that is with a guarded prognosis. Callie. Who taught you how to do an IV catheter like that? You. <laughs> <laughs> Here is a boxer pup. She's three years old and we saw her because she has a mass on her front right leg. As you can see, uh, when boxers get masses, it's usually no bueno. Uh, we did sedate her and take some biopsies of the mass and send it off to histopath. Right now, we're still awaiting the results. The mass is obviously pretty nasty. It's grown significantly and really fast, and the tissue just keeps falling off, and there are these lesions that won't heal. We x-rayed the leg, and it actually looked pretty good, but we're all just keeping our fingers crossed, and all we can really do now is wait around until we get the histopath results. So if you're ever wondering, I usually always film at my mom's gift store and that's where I am currently. I need y'all to see this because this is what my mom ordered for wedding favors. It's called maple pumpkin butter and it looks like Gerber baby food or like regurgitated baby food. I'm not quite sure. It looks really gross, but it tastes pretty good. We'll see how this works out. I hope it works out pretty good. Alexander, what are you doing? Washing my hands. Tell your Birch family hello. 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 No. Have you been outside feeding the chickens? Yes. Are you not happy about feeding the chickens? No, I hate the chickens. 
Why do you hate the chickens? So annoying. They're chickens. Maybe the chickens think you're annoying too. This is my mom's dog. Her name is Lena and she has gingivitis and my mom won't let me clean her teeth. Lena, I'm sorry that you have gingivitis and one day you're gonna lose all your teeth because your mom will get your teeth cleaned. Mom? All right guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure that you have subscribed to this channel and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.